TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live. But by the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe. Turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Don't forget, if you do miss a live and want to see a live, just go to twitch.com. Type in this. You see it right next to me. Popped up around there. And you can watch, rewind, fast forward through any lives that you missed. And be ready for future lives. Don't forget, we got Patreon and we got uh, merch. The link to all of this is down in the description. Shout out to all the Patreoners. This is Vice. I don't know if this is going to get posted, but it is Vice. Ex-inmate reveals why prisons are broken. Life inside. Shockingly, people who went on the course were more likely to commit sex offenses than people who just sat in their cells all day watching television. My name's Chris Atkins. I'm a filmmaker who went to prison in 2016 for a white collar crime. I've since written two books about it. So the first one is just a diary of my time in Wandsworth. And the second one is called Time After Time, which is about why so many prisoners reoffend after they get out. I can say with very, very strong authority that the UK prison system is not fit for purpose. 80% of all convictions and cautions are reoffenses. Reoffending costs about 18 billion pounds a year. You don't you don't have a prison system as such, you just have places where they warehouse the mentally ill and the drug addicted. And rather than treating them, we lock them up in very, very small, overcrowded, disgusting, very dangerous cells, often for 23 hours a day. We leave them there for years and years until we eventually let them out. Far more damage than when they went in. So unsurprisingly, they go right back out and commit more crimes. Well, speaking of facts, man, they need to take a note. America and the UK need to take notes, man. From, I think, Germany and Switzerland. They're doing it over there. They, like, got the prison system down back, like, for uh, re reconstructing, rebuilding people and making them better members of society. When you meet people who been in the system and people who live in the system. They didn't just suddenly turn around age 25 and decide, hey, I'm going to be a criminal. A lot of them had very, very troubled childhoods. There's often a lot of physical abuse, emotional abuse, sexual abuse in some cases, and they were placed into the social care system. This is a social care system that we all know has been riven by cuts and basically almost ends up as a funnel into the criminal justice system. So by the time these guys are 18, they've already got a dozen offences. My crime wasn't one of poverty, but a huge number of crimes are driven simply because people just don't have any money. So when people get made redundant or they lose their house, they're suddenly put in a situation where really the only way they can see that they can survive is to start breaking the law. Right. One of the other areas that people don't really investigate very much is gambling, the effect of gambling on crime. So I met a lot of people who had ended up, whether it was stealing from their boss or whether it was selling drugs, it was all to start paying for gambling habits and we know that gambling targets the poor more than the rich. All the government research shows that ex-prisoners who, who leave the system and go out into gainful employment are far less likely to reoffend. But the problem we have is that people who leave prison with a criminal record are actually sort of tainted by this and it makes employment far, Impossible. far harder because in a lot of cases they have to declare it and who wants to give a job to an ex-con, right? It's the same with housing. All the government statistics show that prisoners who come out with somewhere stable and safe to live far less likely to commit any more crimes. But what we do is we shove them out on the streets without any means to get a roof over their head. Simon McClellan is, is one of the people... Yeah, I know like in America, you can't get like EBT, you can't get no type of Section 8 if you're a felon. None of that is applying to you. In time after time, I spend quite a lot of time with Bizarrely, well over 10 years ago, he, he perpetrated this insane prison break by pretending to be his twin brother. Simon has now, I think, received over 70 convictions. I One remember that. One of the main that. reasons that he ends up offending again and again and again is through lack of housing. And he's in this insane situation where he's released from prison, again, for shoplifting, a very minor offense. So on his license terms of his release, it said, you cannot be homeless. And if you're homeless, that's technically a crime, so we can recall you to prison. But they didn't give him anywhere to live. So within two weeks, guess what? He's back inside again. A huge... Wait, what? A condition of your release is you can't be homeless, but you're not providing a halfway house, a home, or anything? Uh, like... 
You know they reoffended at that point. Which cost to the taxpayer. He was offered a flat by his local council for a month to get him back on his feet. But they said, well, we can't give you this flat until we give you some ID. But guess what? You're not allowed to keep ID in a prison cell. He didn't have any ID. His probation officer refused to get involved and supply ID. So he wow. lost the flat. He ended up sleeping rough. He ended up reoffending. He ended wow. up going back to prison. I encountered many. It's a vicious cycle, man. Many cases where prisoners deliberately reoffend in order to go back to prison. Things are so bad for them in the outside world that prison is genuinely a better alternative. That's common here too. People got nothing, nothing on the outside. They, they, they're known on the inside. They got respect. They got money. They got three meals, a, a roof, heat, or whatever you heat, some type of heat, clothes, blanket, bed, friends. When I was inside, I would say goodbye to people on a Friday and see them back inside again on the Monday. In some cases, I'd go and see the housing that they'd been sent into, and I was looking at it going, God, this is worse than Wandsworth. And it's almost, the outside world is so inhospitable and, and hostile to them that actually a prison cell is more preferable. Lennar has a hot selection of homes. I've actually heard that before. What are we doing? What are we doing? Oh. Prison is such a mad, weird, alien environment that the only option you have when you're in there is to completely adapt. The problem is when you take someone out of that crazy environment and you put them back in the normal world, it's a huge culture shock. What you need need is a process by which step by step you slowly reintegrate people to go out. So I was very fortunate enough at the end of my sentence to go to an open prison, which meant that each day I could go out, you could study, you could do community service, you could get... Don't, um, uh, the UK has that, right? Minimum security where you can, like, go in and out at the end of your sentence if deemed not at risk. That's a, that's a solid tactic, I ain't even gonna lie to you, because it, like, slowly integrates you back into society. It's not just like a oop, rip the bandaid. Here you go. It's a, you could get a job. You could see your family. The problem is, it's only about five percent of all prison places are open prison, and generally, uh -huh. it's only middle class white collar people uh -huh. like me who could buck the system to actually get a place at open prison. So the people who desperately, desperately need to go through the open prison process aren't allowed to go to open prison. Why? Because they have drug addiction problems, they have mental health problems, they have violence on their record. So they go through the closed prison system for years and years and years, and then one day they say, right, get your stuff, they open the gate and they push them out. A big problem I often use- You gotta have a super legit, like, found that, like when you get out of prison, you gotta have good people around you. And a lot of these people, they've been locked up so long, all their friends are gone. They ain't got them homies no more. They ain't got nobody. Uses smartphones. So in prison, smartphones are literally seen as the work of the devil. Like if you touch one, you can get two weeks in the segregation block. The problem is, you then put people in the outside world where everything is run on smartphones, especially after the pandemic. You know, if you want to pay for a restaurant meal, you want to buy a train ticket, it's all done on a phone. And these are prisoners who some we'll of them, when they ran away, point. the last phone they used was a landline. So there's a lot of um, programs and courses you can go on when you're in prison that are all supposed to try and um, tackle reoffending. There's this huge industry uh, among sort of psychologists and sort of criminal justice professionals that makes a vast amount of money out of these courses. And I've found that with quite a few of them, there's either no evidence whatsoever that they have any impact um, on reoffending or on rehabilitation. And in some cases, they actually make prisoners worse. So yeah, there's famously a, a, a course called the sex offender. It'd be people, man, family that you thought was more family than they are, friends that you thought that was more of your friends than they are. When you get out, they're super insensitive. They don't really, you know what I'm saying? They're not really, con I, I mean, it's your fault you was locked up, yes, but they're not really considering like, hey, if he don't do this, he can't get this. So maybe I should help him a little bit, but like, it'd be those situations too. A treatment program that was launched in a huge fan of sex offender treatment program that was launched in the UK it was huge fanfare and, and uh, the course cost about a hundred million pounds over 20 years the Ministry of Justice ended up doing an internal study that showed shockingly that people who went on the course were more likely to commit sex offenses than people who just sat in their cells all day watching huh? television 
Now, there are exceptions to this, and one of them is at uh, a prison called HMP Grendon, which is a terrifying high-security establishment where they send the worst of the worst. But inside, they do something quite remarkable, that they have the only prisoner-led peer therapy process in the UK. The courses aren't managed by the prison, they're actually managed by the other prisoners. And we're talking about rapists, we're talking about child killers, we're talking about mass murderers, and they all interrogate each other about why they've done what they've done. And the saying that they have in Grendon is, you can't con a con. A lot of these criminals are quite used to being able to mislead psychologists and prison governors uh, and social workers. They can't pull a fast one past. That's pretty smart. Just like when you're at work, you have team meetings because without the bosses around so you can speak freely. Uh, or, or in sports, you have all team meetings or all coach meetings peer-to-peer -peer meetings, they go, it, stuff gets handled better that way. Like, like bro, you don't gotta lie to me, I'm one of you, like, cut it out. <laughs> so the therapy is very, very invasive and goes really down to the roots of why these people have, have committed these unspeakable acts. The reoffending rates in Grendon are far, far lower than any other prison in the UK. In fact, it's the only prison that has been shown to re reduce reoffending not just amongst shoplifters and bicycle thieves, but amongst murderers, rapists, and paedophiles. Certain things that are seen to help prisoners, but also help wider society, are condemned by the right wing of, of government and the right wing tabloid press, but also the sort of right wing element in society that thinks that if people have done something wrong, they need to be brutally punished. And anything that sounds like it might be sort of therapeutic, seen as soft justice. And of course, that's a pretty bonkers approach because if you do make these prisoners come to terms with what they've done and why they've done it, they're far less likely to commit more crimes, which means you don't have any more victims of crime. I'm all about the rehabilitation of a prisoner, but hey, you can't be in prison living better than me. Like that right there is gonna rub me the wrong way. Like I've seen somebody in Switzerland with a 75 inch flat screen playing PS5. Like, come on, bro, chill. What you doing on a ranch on a horse? Like, come on, like, what is this? But, you know, till you stay on, man. Tell her, leave a like, comment, I'm gone. <laughs>